Welcome to Therapy on Thursday. I'm Minister Dre with another Caribbean session entitled Push Until Something Happens. As we continue on our love journey by way of 1 Corinthians 13, next week we'll go ahead and close it out. I want to address how love perseveres. A true love will never give up on you. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, love never gives up and love always perseveres. If I could, I would crown Paul the Prince of Perseverance because Paul never gave up on his calling. Paul, the writer of this text, suffered through many circumstances that would have made many of us easily call it quits. Paul went blind for three days, had some Jewish haters jailed repeatedly on the run constantly, stoned and shipwrecked, suffered starvation, had sleepless nights, beaten 195 times, and finally, he allegedly was beheaded. But instead of giving his calling the deuces, something was driving Paul to endure. When the heat of hardship pushed Paul like a bully, Paul pushed back and preached all over the regions and wrote 13 books, planted churches, and provided mentorship for young pastors. Paul loved Jesus and Paul loved his Gentile calling, and that was the point for why he persevered. Fast forward to now, what would drive a grandmama to keep praying persistently for her unsafe family, even though she sees no progress in sight? How many of y'all are thankful that you had a praying grandmama? What about that mother that works three jobs, sacrifices her own needs just to see her child make something special out of their life? That father that's man enough to stick around in spite of the struggles. It's a love that pushes. Perseverance is not a feeling. Let's be truthful, half the time we really don't feel like pushing. Perseverance is a force, a force to be reckoned with. Perseverance doesn't give up. Perseverance gets going over and over and over again, no matter how many times it hears no, and no matter how many times you want to let go. Perseverance will push until something happens. Come on, tell yourself, I'm pushing. True love perseveres. The P in the acronym PUSH usually stands for pray until something happens. But it takes more than prayer to make something happen because faith without works is dead. So you got to keep on moving. The backdrop text of this therapy session is 2 Timothy 4. Paul says, don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry that God has given you. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the faith. We need perseverance to carry out this ministry God has given us, the ministry of reconciliation. What better time to commemorate our calling than in this Lenten season? Lenten season is all about love and perseverance. Lenten season leads us down the road to Resurrection Sunday when Jesus' love for us persevered through the pain just to reconcile us to the Father from the cross. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. They hung him high and stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. That's love. And here's the part where he persevered. Because how many of you know that that's not how the story ends? And three days later, he rose again. That's love. And that's not how your story ends either, because the same power that rose Jesus from the dead in three days is the same persevering power that lives inside of you. So hang in there through the hard times. Push until something happens. You can overcome in spite of those obstacles. Come on, tell that devil, I'm not a quitter. So on this Soul Care Thursday, I want to share two Caribbean tips you need to know when it comes to perseverance. First, you need to know that perseverance is your personal choice. Perseverance is not natural, 
Perseverance is supernatural. Philippians 2.13 says, God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Though it's nobody but God giving us the power to persevere, it's still our choice to accept his plan of perseverance. He's given us the desire, but we have to choose to get going. After listening to folks for many years, I recognize a certain fear tactic that Satan uses to paralyze your prayer life. Satan is good at stealing our prayers by convincing us not to pray for something we want. When folks begin to say things like, God has more important things to do than to listen to my need. <laughs> I know then that Satan is up to something, but the devil is a liar. It's up to us to push past Satan lies and believe and pray that God is going to give you your this week miracle. We sing it every Wednesday, but we get scared to believe it on Thursday. Satan wants us to pull back on our dreams and throw in the towel. Satan wants us to pull back on our relationships and kick everybody to the curb. Satan uses problems to push us in the direction of defeat, but we have the power to push forward towards God's promises. Come on, we gotta push y'all. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I kept the faith. Paul chose to fight. Paul chose to finish and Paul chose to keep the faith. Don't let what you see around you cause you to concede. Choose to be victorious. Choose to be more than a conqueror. Love yourself enough not to give up on yourself. Pick the power to persevere when it comes to the obstacles that try to overwhelm you. Come on, tell yourself, I've got the power. So perseverance is your personal choice. And finally, perseverance is your personal voice. Paul says in verse five, don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news. Your voice is not about your tone. It's about your integrity. So don't let your flesh have a voice. Let perseverance have a voice. Perseverance is already speaking to you. Don't you hear it? If you can hear that voice saying overthrow, <laughs> then you can hear that voice saying overcome. Perseverance says, I can, says I will, says I am. <laughs> when this pandemic hit, they said that it's the end, but the perseverance saint said, it's just begun. Come on, let your voice be heard. Paul said, don't throw in the towel, just tell it. Let me tell you, our choice leads to our voice because when you choose to give up, you give everybody else your voice. You give them the power to call you a failure, but when you push, it will give your voice the power to dictate your destiny. Use your voice to tell your circles that you are serious about Christ. People will respect that you persevered in your purpose. Use your voice to share the living gospel and not let the latest gospel take over your conversation. People will respect that you persevere in your principles. In closing, your perseverance will produce God's promise. Your perseverance will produce joy. It will produce patience and endurance. Perseverance will prove that your faith is pure. So make that personal choice to keep pushing. Your push speaks volumes and becomes your personal voice. And guess what? Your crown is being prepared all because you persevered. Come on, let's pray about it. Father, thank you for giving us the strength, God, to persevere. Thank you for giving us the power to push, God, in the face of obstacles. God, give our perseverance a voice so that we can speak up for you. Help us to not be afraid, oh God. Help us to continue to push, God, until something happens. God, we declare that you're our strength. You've given us the faith, God, to keep on moving forward. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. 
Well, God bless you, my family, my community of faith. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you have any topics that you want us to tackle, go ahead and text me. My number is right here on the screen. Come on, hashtag one by one in 2021. Call me anytime and I'll be available for you. But in the meantime, join me right here next week on this couch and we're going to talk some more. God bless you.